Hey Big Bulls, welcome back to yet another episode of Bullseye. Today we dive into why Honasa's Mama Earth needs a bigger push. We talk about Z share sudden rise that's happening amid all these countless troubles that they are in. And we talk about why Elon Musk is at the center stage of a fight between how India gets its internet. So Saloni, everyone knows Mama Earth, right? It's one of those brands that came in saying that they are toxin-free, natural, suitable for babies, suitable for people like us, right? They got products for our hair, skin, everything. And what made them a household name in India was their onion care, you know, hair care range. But in the past week, the parent company shares, which is Honasa shares, has dropped by nearly 30%. And... Why is that? What's been leading to this downfall? All right, so Honasa consumer, the shares which are actually listed, they are what we call a D2C or a direct-to-consumer brand. And they have multiple brands underneath the Honasa umbrella. There's Mama Earth, there's Derma, there's Aqualogica. And at the start of their journey, they sold all these products to customers like us online. Everything was online. Then that was a massive success, right? But later on, they also decided to go offline. Right, have like a brick and mortar kind of a setup, but they did this through super stockers. So, what are these super stockers? Think of them as a middleman, right? They take these products and they pass it along to smaller stores like the Kirana stores and other neighborhood stores. But what happened in the recent past is NASA suddenly woke up and said, Hey, we don't need these middlemen anymore. And they launched something called the Project Neem. So, Varun Alag, who's the CEO, came out and said that the data they were getting and the sales they were getting from these uh, super stockers wasn't really up to the mark. So this project Neo was actually meant to eliminate them. Mm -hmm. Honasa came out and said, we are going direct even in this space. We will launch our own sales team and the sales team would get their hands dirty. Right? And that's what happened. So, but what happened after the project Neo was launched? Well, it's, it's not looking good, right? That's why the stock has also fallen. So, if I look at the numbers, Honasa is actually taking a loss on its inventory of a massive 70 crores. Now, Honasa expected this to be 50 crores rupees worth of loss, but it's far higher than that, right? So, they underestimated that, but also their sales have dropped 9% in this quarter and there's a 15 crore rupees loss too. And this is the first loss they've reported since the IPO last year. So you can imagine that investors aren't really happy. Right. Uh, but are the problems done now? Was it just a one-time loss? Well, so there is the problem with that distribution. But there's also a problem in an interview again, Varun Alag said that they have a problem in terms of their investment allocation. So they are underfunding their focus products. They have failed on creating a hero product with the right messaging. So going offline and competing with shelf space with a lot of the bigger players hasn't really panned out a lot for it. The other problem is also the brand's pricing. It's between mass and premium. And this makes it extremely competitive because you're trying to break into a market with different income groups, right? And that's never easy. And this news came out yesterday. The distributor's body in India, they actually issued a press release saying that they have rupees 300 crores worth of Mama Earth or Honasa stock lying with them, right? And that's a big problem because it's nearing expiry too. So the demand has fallen and they have this inventory lying with them. And of course, Mama Earth has disputed this. They came out and said, hey, this is not true. But you see where this entire thing is headed, right? At the end of the day, its flagship product, Mama Earth, is going through a bit of a rough patch. So it might not be the fastest growing, I guess. It's not at the moment, which is why he said we need to focus on that hero product and messaging yes, yes. too. So is there any hope at all left? Well, let me actually quote the experts. So the investment house, Jeffries. Here's something that they wrote and I'm going to read it out, okay? Honasa is not the first one to go through this pain. History suggests that companies do come back on track and we are hopeful. In this context, it is useful to note that several large FMCG firms have gone through distribution realignment despite decades of existence. So maybe Honasa can too? Maybe. That's the hope. Right. right. So moving on from Honasa and Mama Earth, let's talk about Z's drama now, Salon. Right. Uh, so Z's MD Punit Goenka resigned and it seems like everybody was waiting for it because the stock after the news jumped 7%. Now this has happened after the stock in this year has been down 57%, wow. right? Um, and 
this is all because of Z story which began in 1992 when Punit Goenka's father Subhash Chandra you know founded the firm and uh, but the family has faced a lot of challenges since then right uh, Punit Goenka actually joined the board in 2005 when he became CEO in 2008 but under his leadership there have been lots of questions raised okay so what are these challenges that he's been facing right so in just the last 4 years right zee's dealt with an investor revolt they have seen big foreign investors bailing they've obviously had this failed merger with sony that everybody was waiting for right and they had many lawsuits and they also had this uh, probe from the market regulator sebi right so it was eventually the zee's only drama you know that failed because it was in between will they won they and eventually they did not right yeah. um so sony to give some context sony decided to merge with uh, z in december of 2021 and at that time investco which was z's largest shareholder they pushed for a board change and they even wanted goenka to resign from his post mm. um but as pa- as part of the merger terms goenka was supposed to lead that joint entity right but sony was later uneasy with this decision of making goenka the you know head of the firm right and that happened because uh, Se- uh, subhash chandra and goenka they had this clash with sebi because the market regulator accused them of fund diversions and also barred them you know from holding key positions right um so that's when sony cancelled the merger in january uh, citing there were some unmet conditions um z of course tried to fight it at the nclt court which is like a company court but eventually both the parties agreed to a settlement and we saw that the merger did not go through right but what about z as a company its struggles still continue what's happening there it does because it does have a healthy cash balance and it does have low debt but its profits have been declining because of course the media industry has been very tough right lately and uh, not just the legal battles but is also facing competition from this mega merger that we've seen recently between disney and reliance industries right, right? um and there's more so z has a low promoter holding of 0.4% this puts the company at risk of a hostile takeover okay so a hostile takeover is when a company or individual they acquire control of uh, another company without the management's consent right yeah, yeah. so under goenka's five year tenure zee's profits have halved and proxy advisory firms like iias they have raised government uh, issues and they have also said that investors should reject his reappointment as md but there is also a catch because uh, the board accepted his resignation as md but they have retained him as the ceo of the company and it's the agm that's happening next week that's going to eventually decide what's the fate of goenka as you know the md of the firm and what's the fate of z as well wow okay this this is very interesting so, so moving on from big names like subhash chandra and puneet goenka let's talk about elon musk now because he seems to have got a hold in india with internet what's happening there salon so for years india has been allocating spectrums uh, through auctions okay so what auctions how does this work right so spectrum is those invisible radio frequencies that carry wireless signals right and the government auctions it like they auction land or oil because these are natural and limited resources and they are used for telecom you know tv defense and of course the whole rise of 4g and 5g has led to the demand of this also rising right, right. Uh, so to balance this all government you know conducts this auction where obviously gives it to the highest bidder and the bidder a telecom operator for that matter gets the exclusive rights and they also get this bigger hand of getting more subscribers in that region but saloni musk has questioned this entire auction process it seems like he's not a big fan of auctioning spectrum right yeah so he was questioning the way india was doing it because uh, he is calling the spectrum a natural resource that companies should share because it has to be shared in an efficient and an economic manner right so here musk wanted licensing whereas mukesh amani he wanted auctions now for that also are very on jio and bharti airtel you know they said that offering satellite broadband airways at a fixed price which is decided by the government is not fair because they had to pay billions during these auctions right when right. they had to get the exclusive rights for right. the spectrums so this now will create an uneven playing field for them and the ito which decides the rules for the satellites you know in a global stage they also have this message clear that spectrum should be allocated and should not be auctioned and almost every country follows that and seems like that india has sided with musk because our communications minister jyotiraditya sindhya he recently announced that the spectrum for satellite broadband will now be allocated administratively rather than through the auction which you know mittal and ambani requested for okay that's interesting so what happens next now that they've said this 
for that to just give a picture of where india stands in terms of you know its penetration um india has like 42 million wide broadband users and around 904 million 4g and 5g users and it's right behind china when it comes to the telecom market and as of early 2024 the penetration internet penetration in india is at around 52% while still 25000 villages do not have that internet access right um even in cities many areas still lack that high speed internet so musk wants to ensure that all this high speed reaches the remotest of areas and that is how its company starlink has applied for a license to operate in the country but the decision of something is still pending so based on what you're saying saloni it seems like mukesh ambani has now lost the battle over the spectrum auctions true and he could face tough competition in the market that he has dominated for a long time also if starlink gets the license right. that may happen right of course so i guess that's it for today we have spoken about three very interesting stories about mama earth and hunasa consumer we have spoken about subhash chandra punit goenka and z and also elon musk and reliance industries and that's it from us for this week stay tuned for yet another cracking edition of bullseye we'll catch you same time next thursday <laughs>